Welcome to Hope Today. We're so glad you joined us. We like to say hope happens here. That's because the hope is in Jesus Christ. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Amy Schaefer. I'm here with Sydney Goldman. And we have a great program for you. We got some music. We got so, so great conversation. Tell us about it. Well, you are going to be in for a treat. Sherry Keggy is in the house with her new album, What I Know to Be True. These songs have been written through seasons of joy and pain, and we all know those seasons, and she is going to speak right to the heart, co-produced with Phil Keggy, who is no stranger here to Cornerstone Television. So today, I believe that something is going to shift in the atmosphere of our homes and in the studio. There is power in music and song and lyrics, and it is for this time, for this moment. You know, Amy, is just you're sharing that I just think of what it says in Psalms about how God, he will sing songs of deliverance over you. And sometimes all it takes is one song to get into your spirit, to get into your heart. So whatever you're walking through, whatever you're going through, that you can praise God if you're in the valley or praise God if it's a good season. But it's so powerful. I just love that what songs and worship, what they do to our spirit. I'm so glad that God has given us a mouth that we can proclaim his goodness and his glory. And, and to know that this is true, like the title says, you know, that there are things that we know that for sure that are true and that God has revealed them to us through his word and through that relationship. We hope you have that relationship with God today. We hope you have that, that a personal relationship, that, that salvation experience. If you don't, we always have prayer partners standing by. If you do, you can pray with them. If you don't, you can ask them about that and they can explain to you how to start that relationship with Jesus Christ. But guys, um, you know, it, it, sometimes we're, we're, we're so, we, when we're in with our churches and everybody, we forget that all of us have had that experience, Amy, that we've been brought from death to life, it says in the scriptures. We've been brought from the kingdom of darkness into this kingdom of light. Right. Not everything's perfect, yeah. but it is the kingdom of God. Well, and because we are operating in that kingdom of light, we bring that salt in that light into every industry, including the music industry. And you know, last night, guys, I was sitting in the living room, kind of going over my notes today and for some sister to sister stuff. And, and my son goes in the living room and he starts playing the guitar and he starts singing, he loves us. Oh, how, and I thought it was like heaven came in. Wow. I couldn't move. And I said, Gabe, you've got to record that for me. You're my favorite singer, songwriter, next to Sherry Keggy ever, <laughs> you know? And it's amazing how worship can shift the atmosphere in your room and in your home. So make sure you don't forget the basics. Worship God, worship him alone. Thank him for his goodness and his faithfulness in your life. You know, that's just so powerful just when you're singing out to God. You know, sometimes there's songs that we know, but there's been moments in my life, even this morning I had a song in my spirit. I just started singing and declaring the word of God. So I just encourage you, you know, sometimes go in the book of Psalms. If there's a scripture, sing that scripture over your situation. Sing that scripture over your house and over your family and over your marriage and over your children and over your community and over the city. There is something when we start singing and we come into agreement with God's word. We start singing and worshiping and it's more than just a song, but we begin to praise God for all that he is, that all he's done because praise brings about a breakthrough. So we just encourage you today, as you're watching the program, we're talking about music, but even in the middle of it, or even when we're over it, make sure that you spend a little time with Jesus today. Make sure you get into the presence of the Lord, because I love what it says is that the mountains bow down in the presence of God. And so we can sing. So whatever mountain is facing you today, you can yes. sing to that mountain, speak to it, and it can be cast down and bit put into the sea. Our next guest is a Dove award-winning singer, songwriter, and she just released her first album in seven years called What I Know To Be True. Sherry Keggy co-produced the new album with her uncle, Phil Keggy, and here is a short clip of them performing this song, Yours To Keep. Check this out. All your reasons not to live.
Sherry, it's so wonderful to have you today on Hope Today. And can I say the Phil Keggy jeans run strong in your vocals and in your style and in your looks? Oh, well, thank you. I was so blessed to get to work with him to the extent that I did on this new project. He is a friend um, of ours here at Cornerstone, and we're so excited for your friendship also and this new project. After seven years, where did this come from? What is the heart behind this new album? Uh, well, the heart is um, my love for Jesus. You know, he's the reason that I sing. Uh, but as you stated in the intro, this is a collection of songs born out of both joys and sorrows, uh, specifically the event of losing my dad in September of 2018. Uh, rather suddenly. Uh, we, uh, as a family, have had to navigate uh, his choice to have uh, taken his life in the end. And we uh, never thought that would be something we would face. It wasn't even in, you know, our vernacular, <laughs> if you will. Um, I praise God that uh, my dad was a believer and that we had a really good relationship. Um, but when that event occurred, it, it, uh, it brought me to such a place of grief, as you can imagine. Um, and I have experienced griefs before, you know, in the past. I had gone through divorce and other losses. Um, and so I know what that is, and I know God's goodness and how he's near to the brokenhearted and the rich, the richness of uh, going to those places of lament because God whispers to us, you know, um, when we're listening. And, and yet this was a grief like no other. I was really in a fog of grief that I couldn't pull myself out of. But I did process a lot of that through many of these songs. You know, I'm in a season where a lot of my friends are dealing with incredibly traumatic deaths in their life. Did you have any idea when you were processing this song, you know, this grief through lyrics and song that it could actually help and minister to many people? Uh, you know, I have a track record with God in, in that for some reason, that's part of how I process life, the songwriting thing. And I've seen how he has used it, you know, how he can take music and um, take the power of his Holy Spirit and have it just, just go straight to a person's heart and bring the comfort or the conviction or whatever is needed. And so uh, I just by faith had to trust that as I processed through these songs that, you know, maybe one day I would get to record them and I wasn't sure the timing of that, you know? And um, so there was some years where I, I just, I needed to spend some time healing and um, Jehovah Rapha is the Lord who heals and he was faithful to do that. And um, yesterday I was journaling and preparing for today and I just said, Lord, I wrote in my journal, Lord, you were there for me, now be there for someone else. What are some of the favorite song, like lyrics in this project that you've done? I mean, so many were sticking out to me. Mm. Um, wow. Well, I mean, you know, I have to touch on, you know, God was so faithful in bringing me a new husband. And so there's a song on this album called Restoration Song that uh, we wrote and sang at our wedding. And uh, also, since I was on your program last, I uh, have become a new grandma. So uh, we have two precious little grandsons. And so there's a song that I wrote to my daughter and surprised and sang it at her baby shower, expecting her first, you know? So there's those joys um, and the, the lyrics that go with those. Um, but I'm thinking of uh, uh, the songs, uh, there's a song on there called Abandonment Wound. You know, even though I had this, uh, a great relationship with my dad and uh, we, we were not just, uh, you know, father, daughter, we're brother and sister in Christ. There was a point at which I was reading in Psalm, I believe it was uh, chapter 16, um, where it says he will not abandon you from the grave. And when I read that, it's like my heart broke and I broke into heavy sobs because I hadn't framed my dad's suicide in that way. 
as a form of abandonment. You know, I know he wasn't doing it to hurt us. He was doing it to escape his own pain. And, um, and yet, uh, the song, there was a song that came from that called Abandonment Wound, <laughs> you know, and of course we know that um, God's love is an everlasting love that he'll never leave or forsake, and he doesn't abandon us to the grave. We have the hope of everlasting life and his unfailing love. Um, there's another song called False Anchors, uh, you know, that uh, just talks about the things that we might cling to in life for comfort or security. Uh, uh, you know, whether that be a, a relationship or an inheritance or a, an, a, an insurance policy or a house or a car, um, but that um, sometimes when those things are removed, it is sometimes only then that we realize our true anchor must be in Christ Jesus. Well, I, I just love the uh, concept, Sherry, of that anchor, that when we're going through that storm, there's an anchor in the rock like that. But I have to, I have to ask you again, I'm, I'm a grandparent now too, so tell me a little bit more because I know that the renewal that seemed to come from seeing those young lives, I have three grandkids, ages five, three, and one. Tell me how that, how God's used being a grandparent in your life to bring about some renewal of life. Yes, um, you know, I can tell you, uh, just it's been such a joy to love on those babies, you know, and to speak their names before uh, the Lord in prayer. Um, and God gave us a gift maybe five days or so before my dad passed. Um, it was my 50th birthday. <laughs> and so my friends and family here in Tennessee were um, had thrown a surprise party for me and we were all together, my daughter and her husband and their infant um, son and um, who was just a few months old then. And uh, we, someone said, why don't we FaceTime your parents in California? And so we FaceTimed my parents. And um, so I have forever now imprinted in my memory, this big grin on my dad's face as he was looking eye to eye with his great grandson via FaceTime, you know, and um, that it was really only just a few days later um, that he took his life. And we had planned to uh, see them in November around Thanksgiving. And instead of celebrating Thanksgiving and him holding his grandson, um, he we we were instead uh, planning and, and giving his memorial service. Uh, so anyway, so it's the mix of the, the, the joy of new birth and the blessing that children are, how sweet and precious they are in our lives, and, and the reality that mm, there's also a loss there. I just so appreciate your vulnerability and your transparency talking about, you know, the joy and then the loss of your father. And I know there's so many people right now that are dealing with the loss, the sudden loss of loved ones. And can you just take a moment to speak to that person that is watching, especially, you know, you said your father um, with suicide. I know that's a thing that's so heavy in so many families' hearts and they've seen so many loved ones go and people are dealing with it. Can you just take a moment to speak to the heart of that person that is dealing with that abandonment wound and that loss? Yes, um, you know, I read a lot of books, aside from being immersed in the word and journaling and prayer and counseling, I read a lot of books and one said that every suicide survivor is looking for life to feel normal again after a life event that is so abnormal, you know, and what I can say a little bit further down my, my journey of grief is that you, you will get to a new normal. You'll always have that loss but you will see uh, a sort of a light at the end of the tunnel again if you continue to avail um, access to your heart to the Lord, you know, and um, instead of running from your pain, run toward him and allow him to meet you there. But I will say that um, a verse that comforted me so much when I got the call from my sister in California that my dad had passed that night, the verse um, from Psalm 116.15 came to mind and I just uh, recalled it. It wasn't like I even read it in the scriptures. I, the Holy Spirit just brought it to my remembrance. And it says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And I just kept repeating that that night over and over again. The, the wonder that uh, and the, the comfort of that promise that, you know, while, while 
we're now having to deal with the loss of our loved one, that somehow that could be a blessing for the Lord to receive them, you know, not in the manner in which dad passed, certainly, but that he is receiving his good son. You know, Sherry, I have friends that are, uh, she's a friend of mine and her grandson is in the hospital. He's a newborn and they found a little hole in his heart and they were doing heart surgery over the past couple of, of days. And as I was listening to your album, I actually sent them that song to bless them. That's what babies bring. And they just sent oh. back tears. And I thought, you know what, that, that's what songs do. That's what the gift and the grace that God has given you to tap into how people are feeling and where they're at and bringing that, that really it's a song of healing and hope and faith and deliverance. Tell us about this song, the meaning behind the song that you're about to sing for us. Uh, yes, well, for, for, the, for your viewers who have lost loved ones, um, people um, mark those events in different ways. And we were having a memorial service, and it sort of fell to me to do a good amount of the planning. And I, and I was, you know, asking mom, hey, is there a favorite hymn that you would like to have? Um, I was, you know, looking at different scriptures, and we're deciding who was going to read the, the different scriptures. We knew that my dad would want the gospel presented. And so I had conveyed that to the pastor, um, the, just these different elements of the service. And, and so I incorporated that all into a song because when I lost my dad in the tragic way that we did, I needed to be reminded of what I know to be true. And um, it was so sweet when we gather with those people that will hold that space for us you know, that we'll, we'll come to a little service, a little gathering, and, and sit with this in our grief is truly a gift. It is a gift. And after you take a nice, beautiful drink of water, I'm, I'm going to ask you just to sing this song to all of us. And I just pray that our viewers today, you just let heaven come into your home today. And let's just enjoy the peace and the presence of God as Sherry sings. Amen. Light the candles, speak the words of hope. Who will read the scriptures? Remind me of what I know to be true. Yeah. 
how can I complain? Our love remains. Who will light the candles? Speak the words of hope. Who will read the scriptures? Remind me of what I know. So precious and beautiful. Thank you so much, Sherry. You know, I was wondering if you could just pray. Pray for those that are suffering um, loss. They're grieving. Uh, somebody that they know has committed suicide. Can you just take a moment and pray for them? Sure. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Lord, we come to you and um, we thank you that you see the deepest, darkest, hardest things of our lives. And I pray for that person, those families who have been touched by suicide, uh, Lord, that you would wrap, uh, you would encompass them and surround them with your comforting love. Um, it says in Lamentations, Lord, that though you bring grief, you will show compassion. So great is your unfailing love. I pray that you would come alongside, for we know that blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so we lift those families to you and pray that you would be that anchor of hope in their lives. Pray that you would draw near to them when they're weeping, when they cry out to you, that you would give them your great and precious promises from your word and bring those people, those fellow saints along, family and friends, um, to help lift them up and encourage them and hold that space for them until they can come to a lighter place. Uh, we thank you for your presence, that you do not leave us alone in our sufferings, but you come alongside and you give us the very gift of yourself. And we receive that gift, the gift of you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sherry. Thank you for the beautiful gift of what I know to be true, your new album. Uh, you can find it on a link on our website and make sure you get that downloaded on all major platforms. Sherry Keggy, thank you so much. Thank you so much, you guys. Just so beautiful and pr how precious it is, the death of the saints in the sight of the Lord. You know, they're right there with him in his presence right now. You know, just having this conversation, it's just you can feel, I know so many people out there have experienced tremendous loss. You know, during the pandemic, a lot of people lost loved ones. Just the weight of everything that's going on. Um, I have a my childhood friend, I just saw like she was posting that she lost her mother and her mom was one of those that actually like she brought me into her home and loved me a lot. And so I just know there's so many people right now that there's this heaviness. I can just sense it so deep in my spirit that if you have experienced loss, if you are going through a season of grief, if you are just in that midst of that place where you're just, it hurts so bad, give us a call on our prayer line at 888-665-4483. We want to walk with you and comfort you because we do not want you to feel alone in this season. We know that grief, it can be heavy, it can be burdensome, it's rough, there's different stages of grief, but we want to let you know that we are here for you. Absolutely. We have a scripture that really just it fits right in with this exactly. You know, we, sometimes we pick these scriptures, we're not sure that, but this does fit perfectly. Hebrews 6, 19 and 20 says this. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. Guys, when I think about that, our forerunner, he's gone before us, he's made the way, he's opened the doors wide for us. And I, I just think, you know, lost my dad last year. Think of dad, a precious saint of God being ushered in. And, and you know, you've seen that picture of Jesus giving the big hug to somebody as they arrive. And I think of, about that as my dad arriving in heaven, uh, a saint of God being greeted by Jesus. I just love that, that comfort. That really does comfort Amy. And I think too that like the scriptures and Jesus modeled how to handle grief and how to handle sorrow. There's so much material out there and, and it's, it is good and, and it's, it's, 
it's wonderful, but man, if, if you'll dig into the word, how did David handle grief? How did Jacob handle grief when he buried Rachel? And how did Abraham walk through grief and Sarah walk through grief? And, and um, what about Eve? How did Eve walk through grief when she lost her first son? I mean, there, it's, it's such a precious, life is so precious. Life is such a gift. And today our hearts are going out to you and for you and those who are who are aching and we pray today that there's a, a there's a shift in your in your home that some joy comes back in some peace comes back in the presence of God is there with you and in your sorrow and in your time of trouble that's what Jesus does yeah. he goes right into our worlds he sits with us he weeps with us he laughs with us he sings over us he's there for us he's as close as the mention of his name yeah. You know, I just remember just thinking about talking this topic of grief because I know we've all been there, we're going to be there. But the moment when you can just sit in it and just give it over to Jesus. My friend recently told me, she said that she was going through a really hard season and she's like, Jesus, this hurts right now, but can you hold my heart? And maybe that's you today. Say, just say, Jesus, whatever I'm going through, I'm dealing with, and if you can fill in the blank, will you hold my heart today? because you say that you are near to the brokenhearted. And just sit in that and allow his presence, allow his peace to be over you. He is the God of all comfort. And that means all. So it doesn't matter what you're facing and what you're dealing with or what you're walking through. God is big enough and he just wants to come right next to you, to be beside you, to sit next to you and say, son, my daughter, I see what you're going through. I am the God who sees all things and I just wanna be with you today. So as now we're drawing to a close with this program, we just hope that you would just take that moment to be with our heavenly maker, to sit at his feet, to be by his side and allow him to speak to your heart, allow him to minister to you, allow him to be Father God and to wrap his arms around you. So don't miss this opportunity. If you don't know God like that, he wants you to know him that way. That's gonna bring that comfort, that's gonna bring that hope. He loves you more than you know. Seek him today and you will find him.